tell you that you need to talk loud because at this time of day I have some problem in my head and it gets blocked up. So okay. if I keep saying what what, you'll know that this is the problem. Uh, and you are how old? I'm uh, 40. 30? You passed from it, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. All right. Good. So, you did you did you look did you see the my video? Did you look at it? No. Oh, they I didn't watch it. Oh. They didn't watch it, but they they want to hear your story firsthand. Well, uh, I thought maybe you had some background information. I gave her a bit of background, but uh, but talk to them as if they don't know anything. Okay. Well, then I hope you have questions. Yes. yes. I don't want to just sit here and No, talk. no, they have questions. They have questions. Okay. It says, how was your life in Germany before the Holocaust? Okay, again. How was your life in Germany before the Holocaust? <laughs> That's a big question. Uh, it was it was okay before Hitler. Hitler started the Holocaust, but it was I my school, my age, my school age, began at the same year that Hitler came to power. So once I started to at going to school, I was already aware of. Well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know any difference, so I couldn't have nothing to compare it to. This, this was the life. My going to school by the time by the time I was seven, eight years old, I would, I would try to hide in doorways to, to avoid the marching Nazis and not to have to do the Hitler salute. Or sometimes uh, the Hitler youth, uh, they would throw stones at the Jews because I went to a Jewish school an old Jewish girls' school. So it was, a, I mean, there was an aware of, awareness already at a young age. The home life was great, the home life was fine. But uh, outside of the home, you had to be careful. Oh, where did your parents work? Where did your parents work? Where did my parents Where did they work? work? My father had a, had a, had a business uh, of, um, uh, for cost, yes, you know, how do you say it in English? Um, knitwear, knitwear, you know, clothing. But uh, it, it encompasses a lot of other things as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a battery. It's not helping me, so I'm not putting it in. Um, thank you. Sure. Um, He had, he had a, he had a store. And the, uh, I guess I was very little still. So, uh, but there was a store until that when when Hitler came to power, he had to give up the store. That was one of the, the, laws against the Jews. So he started to. Um, he, he had to travel, so he went to different towns to travel with his wares and go to different markets and things like that. Was uh, that was not unusual. A lot of a lot of men had to do that because she didn't. He couldn't open the store anymore. And your mother? Hmm? And your mother? What did she? My mother was actually a master dressmaker, so I think she. She mostly took care of the children, but she would go. She would help them in the business also. She was sometimes, a, you know, want to get her away together sometimes. So but um, we, were, we were looked after. We had a, we had an aunt living with us, one of my mother's sisters, and uh, then she would take care of us. Uh, my mother was one of nine siblings so it was quite usual that either an uncle or an aunt would live with us they came from poland to live with us 
Your mother was, sorry to interrupt, but your mother was one of nine? I didn't realize that. I'm having a very difficult time. I don't know what it your, is. your mother was one of nine, did yeah. you say? Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many kids were you in your family? How many kids were you in your family? Three. No, you were two. You. Oh, I have three, yeah. No, no, you, you, you were... Yeah, my brother and I, yeah. You are not be, yeah. Skipping a generation. <laughs> <laughs> um, what languages did you speak? Where the what languages, languages did you speak? What languages did you speak oh, at home? We, we, we grew up in Germany, so of course it was German. My parents spoke Polish and Yiddish. So I couldn't understand much Polish, but Yiddish we could understand. You know, because it's more closer to German. And um, I'm still struggling with, struggling with it lit. <laughs> but uh, managing. When did you learn English? Hmm? When did you learn English? Like when you were a kid? When did I learn English? English. Oh, when I got to England. When I got to England with the kinder transport. Um, what language was your Jewish learning in? What language? Was your Jewish learning in? German. You mean in school? Yeah. yeah. Um, what place did being religious take in your life? What? Place. What role, because like, yeah. what was the role of religion? Uh, uh, a very big role, because I came, I come from a religious home, and we were very attached to um, our synagogue, our shul, the Knesset, which happened to be in the courtyard of our apartment building. So it was almost like a second home. And did that change after? Hmm? Did that change after? Did it change? Did what change? The world of being religious. I, I don't, no, I'm not sure I understand the question. Did, did, did what change? Like, Are you saying for, like for Auntie after, Miriam? Of yeah. How she felt about religion? Yeah. After the change. After, did, did anything change for you religion-wise, like after what you went through and everything? I think well, that's the question. After? What, give me a time frame. Do you mean like, I, do, you not, do you have questions about how Auntie Miriam left Germany? Do, do you have, I'm saying, are you going to get to those questions? or Okay, so when you ask about like the role in religion, do you mean like two seconds after she left or as an adult, like when? In I I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure where you where you're going with the question. Maybe on Timeria, maybe they're asking like some people maybe like left religion after what they went through and stuff like that. So I guess the yeah, question after is what? After what? After you what? said it is after after after, after the war, war. after twenty years, yeah. after thirty, what do you 20. mean? After 10 years, after 2 years, I don't you know, you have to be a little more specific. Okay, after 20 years. After 20 years? Uh, after 20 years I was married, no, I was married to a rabbi, so what didn't change after 20 years? <laughs> okay, so now, like, if you could tell us, um, like, a story that you remember from before the war, the war. The Holocaust. Before the Holocaust, so like a story. You yeah, know. I remember. I rem- you mean childhood stories? Yeah. 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 I remember um, Friday night um, going to sleep, listening to my father going over the Sedra Hashavuah because he was the Balkora in our shul. So so I would I would it was like a lullaby. This was my Friday night lullaby listening to the trop of um, of the laning, you know, 
of, of the chanting of the uh, of the of that week, etc. I was a, that's a very clear and happy memory that I have. So I think that's a good one. So sure. I have a similar memory of my father going over the laning on yeah. Friday nights in the living room. I'm yeah. Sure. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 Isn't that interesting? Uh huh. That we have these. <laughs> See. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then, if you can tell us a story during the war. The story of during the war. Yeah. Like one or two. You know, story. you're being very general, like saying, "And when did the religion? What? You have to." Don't you have something a little bit more specific? Maybe I, I would suggest. I've got a hundred stories. <laughs> <you can't do laughs> tell that. us about tell us about how you left your, like the how you left with the kinder transport, and then I think from there there'll be stories because I think that's a well, better that, place to that's, start. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, that's that's just just before the war, and then the war started. Uh, I left. I left. Um, I left my parents in Poland, in Lodz, because we had to leave Germany. And I was waiting for the papers for the kinder transport to, to be sent to me, which they were. I was about uh, four weeks in Poland with my parents. And there I had my grandparents and uncles and aunts and lots of cousins that I had met before. So I had a very, I had a very happy time in those four weeks before I had to leave again. You were in Poland because they had sent you out of Germany, they had sent the whole family out of Germany? I, I, well, we had to leave Germany. Look, we're skipping over a whole area. It's just too bad you didn't let them watch my video because then they would know what to ask. Okay. You know, that, that was the whole, yeah, I yeah. thought that was the whole point because I'm not, I don't want to go through my whole history. Yes, you know, yes, they yes. I have questions I'm trying to answer as best I can. Sure. Uh, I left, I left Lodge. My parents took me to the, to the train station on July 30th. It was my father's 40th birthday. And I never saw my parents again. Or my grandparents or any of the other relatives that we have there. My father also had a brother and sister. Um, and I got uh, got on the train back to Berlin because the kinder transport left from Berlin. And, and I got there, I had just missed one transport. I had to stay in Berlin for 10 days and wait for the next one. I was 12 years old. How old are you? 16. 16. Oh gosh. 16 is easier. And I was 12 years old. I stayed 10 days by myself in Berlin. I, I knew it. I, I went to an orphanage that I knew about in my neighborhood until the next transport. And then I joined a whole bunch of kids at the train in London, in the Liverpool Street Station where they put up a big monument for the kitted transport and the train station in London and uh, got on the train with the other kids. The Nazis came on the train with us. We were allowed to take one small suitcase and 10 marks. The mark is a, you know, the German money. That's like dollars. That, like, that's, that's all we could take and they all, they made it open up our suitcases and they stole and they pinched stuff and they whatever was valuable they took it was it was very it was very harrowing until we got to the border of Holland with the train and the and the Nazis left and the nice kind Dutch ladies got onto the train with hot cocoa and cookies, biscuits, it was was a it was a total changeover, you know, it was from, from being scared and frightened to be, to feeling relaxed and happy. And then we went to the, as far as, far as uh, the, the boat in Holland and then with the boat, with the ship across the English Channel to England. 
landed in Harwich, and another train to London. That was the journey. Wow. And when you got, we got to London, they took us to a hostel, Rosedon Lane Hostel, which was uh, nice for all the Jewish kids. And I got to eat my first cornflakes the next morning, which I never had heard of before. <laughs> and I also had my first crisis, the, the, first, the first Friday night, the first Shabbat. Because they wanted me, we, were, we had to register with the school. Now this is the very end of August. You know, you you have to you have to get a perspective of the of the time frame, the chrono the chronology. The war started September first, nineteen thirty nine. And we're talking now the last of August nineteen thirty nine. So they came and asked us to sign to be registered for school and all the every every kid should sign his or her name to the to the application form, I guess, or whatever it was. And it's Friday night. And I said, I can't sign. It's Shabbat. I don't write on Shabbat. And oh, but you must. It's an emergency. It's this, it's that. And I, at that point in my life, in my young life, I realized that this is no picnic, as all my parents kept telling me, you'll see you soon. We'll be together soon. Of course, it didn't happen. And I, I could see that this was a very serious situation. And um, I don't know, I don't remember if I signed or not. And I, I think I, I conveniently blocked it out of my head. I really don't know whether I signed or not, but this is, but the next, the next on Sunday morning, the next day, it was Friday night Shabbat, they took us on trains out of London called the evacuation to bring the, the children to safety because they were expecting England to be bombed since that, since uh, war was declared. Well, we had a wedding in New York, you know, my granddaughter got married and David just came back oh, wow, a couple of days ago and I didn't go. Ah, uh, so, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, where was I? Yeah, you were so talking we about the, you, the so evacuation. We were trying to go out of London because they were ex war was declared and they were expected they were expected to be bombed, what they called the London Blitz, which really happened. So they took us to safety, and a um, place called Hemel Hempstead, and that's and that's where the kids were billeted in various different houses. People volunteered to take in the children from London. And it wasn't only the Jeffrey G, the refugee, the kid. It was, it was the London kids too, the local kids. So when you originally came on the kinder transport, were you supposed to stay in that first place? What? When you originally came, yeah. was the plan to stay in the first place you got to? Like... Did they know that you'd have to move to Hemel Hempstead? No, who knew anything? They only oh. knew to save the children from, from Germany. From to Hitler. just go out and that then... Was, you know, just yes. say, England took 10,000 children. Right. They probably would have taken more if the war hadn't started. Mm. But England was the only country in the world that did such a thing, mm. that let Jewish kids in. Mm. Not the parents, just the children. Just the kids. There were some cases where parents came and there were infant children or the parents got jobs as domestic or gardeners or things like that. But, um, but uh, uh, no, that was all, everything, everything was emergency matters. Everything was emergency. You know, nothing was, uh, they did everything by the, by the, what, the seat of your pants, what they say, or something. Yeah. And that's what it was, you know, just save the children, save the children. And the same thing happened in England, save the children, get the children out of London, out of danger. Of course, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a matter like uh, Germany, 
because uh, we knew what we know what happened later. We didn't know at that point what was happening later with the Holocaust, but uh, it's all a matter of saving children, and thank God they saved us. That's why you're all here. <laughs> yeah. The family that took you, huh? The family that took you yeah. afterwards were they Jewish? No. And did you go with Opi or by yourself? No, your Opi was in Scotland. He went on a different on a different program. There were three kinds of kinder transports. I was one. He was on the Youth Aliyah. Youth Aliyah was uh, for all the all the all the kids, was the boys and girls. They already had one on Hafshara in Germany. You know, can you tell them what Hafshara? Do you know what Hafshara is? Yeah, it's, you're not Hafshara. Yeah. It's like, but they were like preparing it's, for Aliyah, so they right. would like train them preparing and preparing for Palestine. For right? Palestine, for Aliyah to yeah. Palestine, yeah. yeah. So he already had uh, gone for two weeks somewhere, and then and then he was accepted to this of the also this kinder transport from a woman who ran it by a very famous name, Resha Freya. It's a very important name to know. There's a Kikar, not far from here on, on Rehocha Riyamenu. Anyway, um, she, she organized this and he, and he was, he together with his group were taken to Scotland. Now Scotland is way up north, you know the map a little bit, and I was down south. So it was a long way and we didn't see each other for two years. Nobody had money for a train. Nobody had money for anything. We, we, we came penniless. The 10 marks, whatever we had, I don't know whether we even got to, to England with her, whether they pinched it, took her away from us. I don't remember that. But uh, we had nothing. I had, I had to, uh, I had to make a list of what my needs were and then from the committee, whoever was taking care of the children, they would send me enough money for whatever I'd asked for. So bobby pins or pencils or not, things like that, you know, toothpaste, whatever. But there was money. Nobody didn't have money to go to the Macaulay and get yourself a bar of chocolate or anything like that. There wasn't, there wasn't any. We weren't hungry. Uh, we didn't have any luxuries either, so. You know, nobody was starving, but but uh, you miss those things when you when you're a kid growing up. You know, it's okay. We managed. Did you eat kosher in the house? Pardon? Did you eat kosher in the house? Uh, no, I would try to eat kosher in the house. Well, no, we ate no no meat, just you know, a, a, a fish and vegetables, and then after. After a year or two, I don't remember how long, the chief rabbi of Great Britain, of England, he came out with a psak. Children who are, the children should eat meat. It's important for them, for their health, for their growth, and they should be allowed, they should be eating meat. So I started to eat meat for a while, but it was, that was very, very difficult, so very difficult. I. I don't know. Uh, there were not enough. There were not enough uh, British Jews, English Jews that took in children. The Goyim were wonderful. They they volunteered and they came and they picked up children. You know, from we were taken to a big, a big auditorium or whatever it was, and they came and they they looked at you. They liked the look of you. They come with me. We had no choice, so we came. I was lucky. I came to a nice family uh, who, were, who were not religious. That was also lucky for me. They, they were churchgoers. Christmas, they would go to the pub and have a glass of port. That was <laughs> it. So that was good for me, too, because, you know, I was very impressionable, and who knows what would happen to me. How many? And lots of examples of what happened to some of the other kids. So. How many families did you stay at? Were you at one family the whole one time? Family. One I was only with one family, with, with another girl. There were two of us. It took two of us as a, you know, a woman and a husband. There were two sons. One was already in the Navy. 
And the other one was a teenager who gave us a hard time for a while, but eventually also went into the army. So. Um, and you were with them till when? Till like 45? Um, when did you stay with them until? When? At the time of, well, from the first day of the war, the first of September, until Yuri and Chava got married, actually. All five years, during all the war years, and uh, you consider that five years is a very long time to take in strange kids. Very long. You know, if you have, if you have guests, and fish for three days is enough. <laughs> so, this is, uh, yeah, it was, it was a very long time. And uh, when time drags on, things are not as happy and welcoming as they were in the beginning. You know, people get tired of their kids, and teenage kids. I don't know. I, I think I was a very good girl. I didn't make any trouble. But uh, when, when my brother, when your Opie got married, I went to the wedding. And uh, at the wedding, I met the, the rest of the family, you know, Auntie Marion and, and her, her parents, the Beckers. And they invited me for a Shabbat, and I wanted to go. And my, we, in England, you call all the adults auntie and uncle, okay? Not by the first name. Doesn't do that. And uh, my auntie Alice said, if you go, I don't want you to go, and if you go, you won't come back. And I thought, that's what I wanted, that's what I prayed for, not to, not to have to stay any longer. I had enough, I, you know, I was very unhappy after all those years. So anyway, I went to, uh, for the Shabbat to Lechworth. To, to be with your Obi, and, uh, and they just took me in, I never left, like I became, I became the third daughter in the house, just like that, it was wonderful. At the Beckers, at, at Omi's, at Omi's parents, like with yeah. Omi's parents. Yeah, Mommy and Daddy, I just became like the third daughter. Oh wow. That was, yeah, well that's, uh, it's, uh, what can I tell you, Hashem took care of me. He, always, he had sent, sent me my, my, my malach along and to stay with me all, all, all through the years. I still have him with me, it's good. <laughs> you have other questions? How did you keep in touch with Opi the whole... Okay, place? how did I keep in touch? I have in the bottom drawer over there there's a big envelope. When when your uncle died, young young kid, your uncle, your uncle, he uh, he went through all the papers, and he presented me with this envelope, five years of letters that I wrote to your uncle. Wow. Five years I wrote the five years that I was that I was living in Hamilton, and he kept all my letters, and invariably. At the end of every letter is, why don't you write? Did you get my letter? <laughs> I haven't heard from you. That's, that's, yeah. But those letters, those five years letters, uh, there's a book to be written. I, I was going to tell you. Oh, well, I, need, uh, I need somebody else to buck me up. I can't. It's very hard for me to handle. That's myself. amazing. Yeah. You have somebody to come along and do that, that would be good. Um, are they all? They're all in English or German. Uh, the first few letters are in German, then I switch to English. That's nothing. I translate the German one. It's not no problem. Wow. Are there any letters back from Oppi, or did he hardly ever write? I didn't. No. I, I I guess I moved too too far away to keep. I I I discarded so much stuff before we made mm. What could I do? No, no. But did he he wrote every so often? I have I have one or one or two cards. I, I have a few for office, but not not a ton, not, yeah. No, not not like I wrote. I wrote all the time. You know, five five years of letters. It's a lot of letters. 
It really is. It really is. Because now if you collected someone's WhatsApps or emails, it's not very interesting. No. No. You can just erase it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's not missing a lot without letters. Yes. I know that when after we made Aliyah, even before, well, they don't know about air letters, the blue air letters. I, we used to get them from Omi and Opi all the time. Yeah. I gave my son Gedalia a, a whole bunch of them that he wrote home to us when he was in Yeshiva here that year. And he spent a lot of time in Ramad Eshkol. In, uh, in, in, you know, with with, with Omi and Opi, yeah. and uh, I, I just spoke about that one of the yard sites once or twice. Mm. So when he was here, I gave him all the letters he wanted them. So I said, fine, as long as somebody is giving, very interesting, you know. Sure. All here. Yeah. A lot about the fatlas in there too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Do you have other questions, guys? Um, how did you decide to make a yacht to Israel? Well, uh, I, I, guess, I guess Israel was always part of my, I don't know, my DNA. I always thought a lot about Israel, you know, like, uh, first of all, we followed the news when Israel got independent, 1948, and you, and, you know, people who thought about Israel Zion in a Zionistic way followed the news and so on, but when, when my, uh, my children made Aliyah in 1983, they, they kept telling us, and it was, uh, it was getting close for my husbands to retire, and uh, they kept writing to us, we should join, we should come, we should come, but not after a week time, we should come, we should come. And uh, after three years later, we came and they really, they really pulled us here. So it, it was a big, it was, it helped us to make the decision because they already lived here, my older son. They live in the bush. When did you meet your husband? Ah, that's an interesting story. When did I meet my husband? I met him in the home of Rav Gorbich, who became the Rosh Hashiva in Gateshead. You don't know that story? No. Um, okay, I was I was a, during during the week I would I would stay in London and usually room together with. Auntie Mary, and for Shabbat we'd go back to Letchworth to, you know, be with the family. Auntie Marion was we Omi's sister. Working. Yeah. We were both working. And anyway, she was, she got married, so that left me to be by myself in London. And then I would be invited for Shabbat to this family, that family. And the best place always since your, your Auntie Marion got married to Yanka Lopian. Yankul Lopian was the youngest son of a very famous Rav, Rav Elia Lopian. And if you don't know about him, you better teach them. <laughs> I mean it. Okay. Very important. I'm writing down my homework. The Lopian family became very, uh, became very close with them. First of all, through Auntie Mary. And besides that, Yankul was part of our group in Lechworth. We had a, we had a, like a Bahad group. Like uh, Bnei Akiva, because... Uh, yeah, 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 whatever, like Bnei Akiva. Torava, Roda, they was called. And, um, and that's how Mary and Yanko met to God. So anyway, I was often invited to Uncle Yanko's older sister, Tante Libbe. You heard of Tante Libbe? I think I've the heard that. The oldest of the... Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I, I used to go there sometimes for Shabbat if I didn't go back to Letchworth. And one Shabbat I was supposed to go to Letchworth and, I, and they said, don't come, go to Auntie Libba. Okay, I didn't ask questions. Okay, I don't mind. So I went there again, you know, Shabbat lunch. And in the afternoon, she had some visitors, a good friend of hers, who brought her brother, a young man who had just come from Canada, 
to visit his brother and sister. And I, when we were still sitting at lunch, I, did, I hardly saw him. Anyway, the next thing I know is that I get a message that this young man by the name of Joel Litke would like to take me out, would like a date with me. I said, okay. So we did, we went out. It was like the Shabbat, that was a Thursday. And, and the following Shabbat, I stayed in London again. And he wanted, he wanted to meet me again. We went to walk in the park, Shabbat afternoon. And he asked me a lot of questions. I did a lot of talking and then I asked him questions. He didn't say much. <laughs> and we sat down, talked and he proposed to me. Wow. Just like that. So this is like a week after he met you? Yeah, that's right. Pretty quick? Very quick, yeah. <laughs> he was in the, I guess he had he hanging around, I guess. I, I knew it was it. Uh, I, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, after a while, I said, we went out for a few times, and okay, but by Hanukkah time, we got engaged in, in the house where we met, Auntie Libba's house, Robert's house. She made the engagement for us, and in February, we got married. So this, the engagement was Hanukkah time, and this is February, we got married, and then he, he came from Canada, so he already got he secured a position in a shul, not far from Toronto. So I had to move to Canada. But at that time, although England had won the war, there was food reversion, was scarce. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, England was very poor. And both your OP and and Uncle Yo's brother and sister, everybody was going to follow us to Canada. Canada was, you know, like like a golden it was one. I don't know, maybe maybe a little less than America, but Canada we could get to. P.S. Nobody came. Nobody, nobody followed us. Nobody came. And we were on our own. We were really on our own. No relatives. Nobody. But okay, we managed, Pro Hashem. So. Uh, Uncle Yol was born in Germany or in uh, Can? Where was Uncle Yol born? Yeah, in Kassel, in Germany. Well, he, he got a free ride to Canada from the British government. He was an enemy alien as a Yeshiva Bocher. All, all the young people who came running away from Germany after the war started, there was they were afraid that uh, there was going to be a fifth column. They were afraid that Germany was going to invade England because it was only the English So they sent him to Canada? They sent him to Canada. Uh, some of them were sent to Australia and some of them were sent to Canada. Hmm. So he was in Canada. New Brunswick, together with, with Nazi prisoner of wars in, in, war ca in camps, Prisoner camps. Oh my gosh. And he had to chop down trees in New Brunswick. You see him watching chop trees? I don't think he chopped too many trees. <laughs> no, they, they, no, they got some pocket. It was crazy. I have a, I have a whole a whole other talk on that. The whole I, right. I once did a whole talk. It was just it's another you know, it's another whole another whole aspect of the Holocaust that people don't know about. Not many people know about the kinder transport, and certainly people don't know about this internment on the Isle of Man. Your uncle Yankee talks about it, all these mm. things. And um, okay, so he came and he saw and he conquered, and then we went back to Canada. <laughs> and we stayed in Canada for about six years. Had two children were born there, and then we moved to America to be where my younger son was born. Uh, 
and uh, it was it was fun. It was it was a good life, but but uh, with no family, no, you know, not 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 until we got here. Well, we got here before your Opie, so they mm. came here a few years later. So, but we got we went back and forth as much as we could, all the smart work and so on. Do you have more questions? Well, I would make a suggestion yes. to you in order to, I don't know, fill in gaps or get a proper picture, you should look at the video. Absolutely. The guys here, you got a homework. So, I mean, you know, that No, so the video, we didn't... Make sense to me. You had, no, absolutely. They had a project, like you have, the, they need to, for school, to interview someone who went through the Shoah. I understand. So, yeah. bleak cash to the video, we decide to come visit you because that's no, who we, but they should the watch right the video thing. as well. I think well. did the right thing because I've had, I've had a few, a few, quite a few, you know, youngsters who just, and, uh, and, and to use, you know, use your own, use your own words and how you describe what you hear. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, that's also that's also important. But uh, you know, you've heard bits and pieces, so if you see the video, you get more you get more of the feeling yes. of the stories, which is not you know which can't which you can't do here. So would you like a drink or something? I'm good. How are you guys? I'll have water actually. Water. What? Water. 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 Okay. Water. Okay. Yeah.